The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me and I in you. The one who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. As I call out the names of each of our candidates for confirmation, I would ask you to stand where you are and to remain standing until all the names have been called. Naomi Aririguzo, Clara Butler, Evan Campbell, Grace DeMond, Anderson Eisner, Connor LeBlanc, Simon Logan, Igoza Bonafuturna Oronse, Alex Roberts, Lucia Rocca. No. Bishop, I present to you these young people of Holy Redeemer Parish, who have completed a period of preparation for confirmation. They have deepened their knowledge of Jesus Christ by studying the truths of our faith. They have been strengthened by God's grace in the sacraments and have been supported by the prayers and example of our parish community. I now ask you to celebrate the completion of their initiation into the life of Christ and to seal them with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Normally I would get a little bit closer, but I'm conscious of these five cameras here looking at me, so I'm not sure if I'd be cut off or whatnot. So, um, so you guys ready for this? Yeah? Do I need to examine you? A little pop quiz? No? You don't seem too enthused about that? Okay, you can sit down, relax. So first of all, do you, uh, have you met this uh, new priest over here? Father Stephen Mawinney? No longer deacon, but he was just ordained yesterday. That's pretty exciting. So he'll be celebrating the 11 o'clock Mass there tomorrow, presiding. It'll be his first Mass, or uh, first Mass of Thanksgiving. So we look forward to that. And um, maybe one, one of these days, one of these young men or more will be the next to be ordained. Right? We're going to be praying for that. Put you on my prayer list. I got, I got all your names now because I got your letters. Um, but uh, first of all, thank you for your letters and uh, 
it was very, I was very impressed with what you wrote. And um, you know, some of you talked about the importance of that personal relationship with Jesus. I think one of you said that uh, in the last little while that you've grown closer to the church and you, you join your family going, coming to church and going to at Eucharistic adoration. Um, so there's a, a lot of wonderful things that, uh, that kind of gave me co the confidence um, to be able to, um, with great joy and uh, zeal, to confirm you today and uh, recognize that, that you are ready to say yes, to give your deeper yes to the Lord and receive a deeper infilling of the Holy Spirit, or at least a stirring up of the gift of the Holy Spirit already received in baptism, along with all the gifts that you need to be able to really um, fulfill your baptismal call to be missionary disciples. Supported, of course, first by your parents as the first evangelizers, and the godparents, and, and the church that accompanies you in your faith journey. So th these are some of the, the events, I guess, in the life of the church that, that make me really proud to be Catholic. I don't know about you, but certainly I'm proud to be Catholic today, especially and um, how about you? You know, if someone, if someone were to ask you, why are you Catholic? Why would you, what would you say? How would you respond? I don't know how many of you have heard of G.K. Chesterton, but about 100 years ago, uh, G.K. Chesterton, who was a very famous reporter in the UK, uh, announced to the whole world, shockingly, because he was a Protestant, he was Anglican. I'm converting, I'm becoming Catholic. And people you know, asked him, why? Why would you become Catholic? And he said, oh yeah, there are 10,000 reasons why I'm, why I'm becoming Catholic. But there's one reason that kind of sums it all up. And he said, Catholicism is true. So why is Catholicism true? Can I give you three reasons? Number one, God exists. Number two, Jesus is God. Number three, Jesus established a church. So let's look at the first one, God exists. How do we know God exists? I mean, look around. When you wake up, in the morning, you look outside, you see a beautiful sunrise, or before bed, you see a beautiful sunset, the beauty of creation. When you think about this great universe that we live in, that we enjoy, did it just kind of pop up just like that, without any, anything causing it to come into existence? Nothing can come into existence without it being caused into existence, right? If, if for you philosophers and scientists, and yes, science and the church are compatible, right? We believe in science as well. <clears throat> you know how old the universe is? It's over 13 billion years old. How did the universe come into existence? Even if you subscribe to the Big Bang Theory that the universe kind of was an explosion and came into existence, someone had to have caused that Big Bang. There's always a first cause, right? There is a first cause. Something can't come into existence without it being caused into existence. So it would have to be, first of all, <clears throat> someone that, or something that is beyond the universe, right? Because something within the universe can't cause the universe to come into existence. So something transcendent has to be beyond space and time. Can't be limited by space and time. So something somewhat eternal. And then it would have to be something, someone pretty intelligent, pretty powerful, to create something so incredible, right? So when you think of transcendent, eternal, supremely intelligent and powerful, 
Who do you think of? God, right? God exists. Number two, Jesus is God. We just heard in the gospel, Jesus says, on that day you will know that I, I am in my Father. Many times in the gospels, Jesus makes himself equal to the Father. And even at, at his baptism, we saw the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit present. The Holy Trinity, one God and three persons present. So many things that Jesus said, he claimed to be God. In fact, that's why he was crucified. He was accused of blasphemy, of making himself God, making himself equal to God, claiming to be God. But then in, in one passage he said, well, if you don't believe my words, and first of all, I mean, you can look at all the scriptures and you see the link between the Old Testament and the New. You see the Old Testament prophecies announcing the coming of a Messiah. You know, Isaiah, behold, a virgin will conceive and will bear a son and his name will be Jesus. He will be called Emmanuel. And then you see in Matthew, Matthew's gospel, that the, the fulfillment of that prophecy that he will be called Jesus and he will also be called Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? It means God with us. But even if you don't believe the words, as Jesus says, believe my works. And we know that Jesus performed some pretty incredible deeds. Right? He walked on water. How many people here have walked on water? What, you've never walked on water? I have. Well, in the wintertime, right? On a frozen pond. <laughs> okay, that doesn't count. Jesus walked on water. You know, he commanded the seas and the wind to stop. He had power over the elements. He raised a man to life, Lazarus. And then he raised, he was raised himself yeah. to new life in the resurrection. How many people can do that? Who can do that? Who can forgive sins? Who can heal the way that Jesus did? Or forgive sins? Who but God can forgive sins? So in everything that Jesus said and did, he proved to be God. He is the Word made flesh. He is God in the flesh. God exists. Jesus is God. And Jesus established the church. Jesus wanted everyone to come to know God. Wanted come to, come to come to know the Father. He revealed the Father's love in His person. He wanted everyone to come to eternal life. To enjoy that communion of love with God and with one another. That's why he said, love God, love your neighbor. He gave us the two greatest commandments and invited everyone to encounter him. That's why he founded the church. Did Jesus leave a Bible? When did the Bible come into existence? Much later, right? But the oral word was passed on, but the written word didn't come until later. And it was the Catholic Church that determined which books were inspired and would make up the Bible. Right? That happened in the 5th century. It was the Catholic Church that determined the canon of Scripture. And when we look at Matthew's Gospel again, you remember the passage where Jesus comes, goes to Simon Peter and says, You are a rock. And on this rock I will build my church. And then at the end, at the end of Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 28, Mark 16, Jesus gave that great commission, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and proclaim the good news to all the world. Jesus founded his church on the apostles to continue his mission of salvation. And from our baptism, we 
are incorporated into the church. We become members of the church. We receive God's life in us through the Holy Spirit that communicates God's life to us. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important, right? Sometimes he's considered the forgotten person of the Trinity. But the Holy Spirit has a very important role and we're talking, we're hearing a lot more about the Holy Spirit in the, in the readings as we approach Pentecost in two weeks from now. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, right? Who convicts us of the truth. Who leads us to all truth. Who leads us to Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. When you compare Jesus, who founded the church, to other founders of other religions, Muhammad or Buddha or Confucius, means they pointed to a certain way, to certain truths. But only Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And we all share in that great commission to participate in his mission of salvation from our baptism and then strengthened in confirmation when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in fullness with all his gifts to be able to respond with great generosity to Jesus' invitation and commission to, to go to all the nations, share the good news with everyone so that they will know the truth of God's love and fall in love with him and desire to follow him as his disciples and then make disciples of others. So how many of you remember your baptism? You don't remember your baptism? You were babies, right? When you were brought to the church to be baptized, it was your parents and godparents who loved you so much that they brought you to the church. And at that, at that moment, they asked, they, they, on your behalf, professed their faith in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and in the Holy Catholic Church. They renounced Satan and all his works. So today you will do that, candidates. So if you are ready to renounce Satan, to profess your faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and take responsibility in a deeper way for your life of discipleship, I invite you to stand. So these are going to be some questions I'm going to ask you. Do you remember the answers to all these questions? Okay, so if you forget, maybe sponsors, you can stand with them and kind of whisper it in their ears in case they forget, right? But it's a simple answer, I do, to all these questions. And since we're celebrating a, a Sunday vigil mass, I invite the entire community to stand and to respond to these questions because it replaces our creed. But I need to hear candidates, your I do's louder than everyone else, okay? Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried? rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amanda. Amanda volunteered to hold my closure in my room. There you go. You got a big job. Thank you. So this is 
the, uh, the part of the confirmation called the laying on of hands, where we ask for the Holy Spirit to come upon you now in fullness with all his gifts. So we're going to pray this in silence and I invite the whole community to pray with me. But candidates, maybe I'll invite you to kneel if possible. If everyone else can remain standing. So this is as a sign of reception. Are you ready to receive the power of the Holy Spirit in a new way? So dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these as adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit of character. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord. You may be seated. So at this point, you will be coming forward one by one, along with your sponsors. The sponsors, right hand on right shoulder, just as a sign of support. And again, if the candidates are a little nervous, you can help them out a little bit. Um, so you'll tell me your name, and then I will anoint you with chrism on the forehead, and I will say these words, and then you will respond in a certain way. All right, so these, this is your pop quiz now. You ready? So I'm going to say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you will respond. I can see a sponsor there whispering in, so <laughs> thank you, sponsors. So it starts with an A. <laughs> be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right? Amen means be it so. I believe. I want more of you in my life. Come Holy Spirit. Alright? So let's, let's, I want to hear this with a little bit more enthusiasm. So be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then I'm going to say peace be with you. And with your spirit. Very good. So please come forward. As you, as you practice. Naomi, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Clara, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Grace, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Anderson, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Connor, 
be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Alex, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Lucia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congratulations. <laughs> 